ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय श्री विष्णु सहस्रनाम नेम इज फोर हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी थ्री फोर हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी फोर एंड फोर हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी फाइव दीज नेम्स आर ऑल सिमिलर इज ट्रांसलेशन रिक्वायर्ड महाकोशा kosha means a uh, treasure house so we have the term kosha dhaksha which is translated as treasurer one who's in charge of the treasure treasury yeah treasury i guess you do then mahabhoga who has uh, all enjoyment and mahadhana means great wealth so these names are uh, very similar obviously if we're going to talk about the supreme personality of god it means he has all wealth and no meaning to this uh, idea that is floated around daridra narayana god is a poor man although this idea seems to some to be very good the idea of seeing god even as the poor man it's actually as shri prabhupada pointed out extremely offensive because the very uh, meaning or, or the reason that we in this con- in this material world would recognize narayan as supreme is because of his wealth and his power that's what distinguishes him from us of course when we come to krishna then we uh those who are seekers after pure love of krishna without any thought of wealth or majesty then these points are not so important to them but if we are to understand god then obviously he is the most wealthy and to say he's a poor man is very offensive now to see god in everyone and in everything that's good but to say that the poor man someone who's in that position they're suffering from their karma from some sinful activities therefore they are uh, to to equate them with narayana that is most sinful of course even the rich man to equate him with narayana uh is incorrect although we may equate the king with god the brahmana with god because uh they're his representatives on the world in this world however even them if we think it we there may be a great powerful king but even if we think that he is directly non different from narayana then that becomes a great mistake which uh in the past many emperors made it used to be all over the world that in various civilizations that great powerful emperors they were equated by their peoples with the supreme god and they thought that themselves but obviously they weren't it, it's uh, so it's very important to understand all these points very clearly otherwise we'll get in a big mess big trouble <laughs> so great great treasury he is the he is the reservoir the receptacle everything is in him all wealth even the fabulous wealth of great wealthy people the, uh, the land of india was famous in the western world travelers would bring back stories to europe about the fabulous wealth of india which made the wealth of the kings in the west uh, seem insignificant uh, so uh, they had so much wealth 
But that's only insignificant compared to Krishna, because Krishna has all wealth. Yad yad vibhuti mad sarvam srimad urjita mevava tatta deva avagacha tvam namatejom sasambhavam Anything wonderful in this world tends to awe us. If a big snake came crawling in this room, which is less likely now the door's been closed, although the door wasn't closed for that reason, we'd be awed by its threateningness. It's 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 uh, the, th- the 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 sense of danger, or if. Uh, Crocodile came in. You have inland crocodiles in Sri Lanka? Hmm? Yeah. So that could be a danger when you go swimming in any big pond. Then just to see it, it looks, oh, very frightening. It is very frightening. They have such power that quickly they can snap so quickly and break your whole body. So we become awed which just shows how small we are compared to Krishna, who single-handedly destroyed the armies of Jarasandha 17 times. <laughs> just for instance. Hmm. Jarasandha, massive army, and Krishna comes out alone and just destroys them all. <laughs> So all opulence is within Krishna, all wealth, particularly here wealth is mentioned because people are very interested in wealth. People are very interested in gold. For wealth, the people, they will kill their own children, their own mother. People are overcome by greed. Very dangerous. For the sadhu even, very dangerous. Kanaka. Two things are mentioned as being very dangerous for the saintly persons who are seeking after perfection. The first is kanaka, gold, and the second is kamini, women. But kanaka is mentioned first. So it can be very dangerous, but when we realize that all wealth is in Krishna, and we cannot own it, we can have a semblance of owning it for a short time. We may say, I have got so much gold. Uh, But what does it mean that you got it? Because just in one lifetime, in a short, short blip of time, you think it's yours. We find in the Bhumi Gita of the 12th canto of Bhagavatam, the Bhumi Devi, Mother Earth, is laughing at all these kings who thought, she gives a long list of names, including Prithu, uh, some great pious kings, maybe Ram also, I can't remember. Uh, hmm? Ram. Ram's also, a Ram. maybe a different Ram, there are so many Ramas. Yeah. Uh, she's laughing that they have, they, th- they thought that I belong to them, and they fought amongst each other to establish I own this earth, but they don't know anything. Dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return, says the good book. Uh, that we, the, the body is formed of earth, mostly. Human bodies are mostly formed of earth, according to Vedic uh, chemical reckoning. And earth and water, all the ingredients are there. Fire, air, all the ingredients are there. So this body is formed from earth and it will again become earth. And in the meantime we think it belongs to us. Everything belongs to Krishna. There are several names in uh, Vishnu Sahasranam which emphasize this point. Everything belongs to Krishna. Everything is his. It's, we can't really claim anything to be our, to be our own. Uh, therefore we have the first verse of Isha Upanishad Isha Vasya Midang Sarvam Yatkincha Jagachang Jagat Tena Bhunjita What is that? Tena Bhunjita Yena Yena 
Chaktvena Bunjita Magrita Kasya Sridhanam Kas Dhanam Who does this Dhanam? Who does it belong to? We are we are allotted a certain amount of wealth for our use in this world, but we should know whom to actually it belongs. And not not uh, claim authority or lordship over anything. So Krishna is the great reservoir of wealth. Uh, he has uh, everything. Um, what is his great treasure? Now different commentators have commented on this in different ways. What constitutes his great treasure? What What is the essence of his treasure? Some say dharma. Some say ananda. Uh, this is following the Taittiriya Upanishad, Brahma, Yad Brahmeti, that uh, Yatoba Imani Bhutani Giant, there's the, uh, that from which everything comes, that in which everything exists, in which everything enters. And there's a whole series that Ananda, what is it? That is Brahma, that is Ananda. So these are all. Uh, indivisible qualities, inseparable qualities. But ultimately, from his own perspective, his own greatest treasure is Prem, in which Ananda, Dharma, all of these are subsumed. And uh, Prem means specifically his love for his devotees and most specifically for his uh, uh, female counterpart, Srimati Radharani. So she is the, this is the uh, Gorya. Uh, the Gorias can see this. Uh, so, treasure, in the Vedic understanding, the treasure is, or in any pious or moral, human understanding. Wealth is not simply for accumulation. But wealth is meant for... Yeah, accumulation, obviously, otherwise it wouldn't be wealth. But then that is meant for distributing to others who need it. The king accumulates money. Or, but when, when there's a time of need, say there's a famine or something, then he uh, procures food grains maybe from a neighboring kingdom or whatever, with the wealth that he has taken from the citizens and distributes it for their need, uh, to fulfill their need. Also the king, uh, with the wealth that he has uh, collected from the people, uh, then apart from the administration of the state, um, protection of the state, then he also undertakes uh, works for the public benefit, such as digging wells, making roads, and so on. So Krishna, uh, he has inexhaustible wealth, which means that, uh, unlimited, inexhaustible. He's been distributing that from time immemorial, and he goes on distributing it. So he's also the most kind. Hmm in that regard that he's he's not a miser he's not wealthy by being a miser but rather he wants that to share that with everyone and uh, he's so kind and so much wanting to share that with everyone that he personally comes to this world and invites everyone to sh to share what what i am i am willing to give myself to you uh, he's so he's, uh, th that is his kindness. He's, he, he is everything, he owns everything, he's far greater than us, but he's willing to give ourselves, himself to us, if we uh, give ourselves to him. It's a, it's a great deal. <laughs> if, if you give everything you have and to someone, and they give to you everything they have, and he's much wealthier than you, then it's a good deal. 
course, I, in this world people are afraid of being cheated because they may not believe it. <laughs> Generally, if someone comes to you and says, here, uh, I invest on this, you'll make lots of money, we can split half and half. You invest the money and we'll, I, t- I gave you the tip. So we'll go on half and half and say, yeah, this person's a cheater. Yeah. Or uh, give, me a, give me a loan and I'll give it back to you in two weeks with 50% interest. Sounds great, doesn't it? But phew, how can you trust such a person? So it's difficult for people in this world to get trusts because they're so used to being cheated. Therefore, the sadhus they broadcast these messages of Krishna and, and try to convince people that what Krishna says is true. You won't lose by giving yourself to Krishna. You'll gain completely. People are afraid. We have to convince them. Atmanikshepa. This is the... Uh, one quality mentioned among the six of Sharanagati, taking shelter of Krishna, Sharanagati, Atmanik Shaper, throwing oneself at Krishna, just without reservation, completely giving oneself to Krishna, Atmanivedam. The kosha, um, that also means a covering, particularly there are the uh, five coverings which are mentioned in Chandogya. Upanishad, I believe, uh, which have been the subject of much commentary. The five coverings that is uh, called Annamaya Kosha, the covering which is of Anna, which generally mean known to mean food. Uh, then Pranamai Kosha, Gyanamai, Vigyanamai, and Anandamai. So Srila Prabhupada has uh, explained this to I'm saying it, it's been explained in various ways by various commentators. But Srila Prabhupada explained that in the, in the lowest stage of consciousness one is only thinking of oneself. Thinking of food for oneself. And there are certain living beings who they're, they're only... Practically their whole existence is just getting food. That's all. They don't. Uh, so it's a very low level of consciousness. For instance, a baby. They don't. All their, all their interest is human baby. Just food for me. Then pranamai means we become aware of other pranis. There are other living beings also. Uh, Gyanamai. That means to, uh, start to come to the spiritual platform to wonder what everything's all about uh, spiritually to, to try to get spiritual knowledge Vigyanamai means realization of spiritual knowledge and Anandamai means to actually come to the perfect stage of pure Krishna consciousness so these are all different uh, coverings we're covered by uh, various levels of material consciousness. Of course, uh, Anandamai, that is the perfect stage of realization. So in that stage, uh, that may not be a covering, although um, devotees on that stage, they can also be as if covered by Yogamaya. They're in such bliss of loving Krishna that they don't even recognize that he is the Supreme Lord. Uh, yeah, and Bhagavan is the Maha. There, so there's Anamai Kosh, Pranamai Kosh, Gyanamai, sometimes called Manamai Kosh, Vigyanamai Kosh, Anandamai Kosh, and then Bhagavan is Maha Kosh. He's beyond all of that. So that's another way to explain Maha Kosha.
see if there's anything else here about that. All my little bits and pieces of paper. <laughs> uh, then Mahabhoga. Um, Bhoga means opulence or enjoyment. So it's a similar name. But this uh, this gives the idea of enjoyment. Wealth is not necessarily... It's often associated with enjoyment. But not necessarily. In fact, at least in the modern world, uh, we know of misers who are miserable. Aneka chitta vibhranta Maya jala samavrita Always full of anxieties uh, being covered by the fully covered by the net of maya of illusion. So generally their, their anxiety that someone will come and take my money they become so they, they, don't, they don't even know how much they've got. They've got, they've got so much but they can still they're in anxiety that they'll lose it all. Whereas Krishna, he's not worried. He's in no danger of losing anything. He's just enjoying. The really wealthy person, um, Tejas Prabhu told me that he used to run a, uh, he used to run a, uh, some, some kind of symposium. He used to bring together all rich people in Asia with rich people from the West. Big, big, very big people. And bring them together so that they can discuss and make mutual investments. So he was friends with very, very big rich people. And he said there was one person in particular from Switzerland. And they just used to talk very freely. And he presumed that that person presumed that he, Tejas, was also a billionaire. Because... Such people, they, I just said they're in anxiety, but some they may be very relaxed also among the, the company of others because other billion, other people on their own level, because with others who are on a lesser level, they're always afraid that they're going to try and do something. Do they want something from me? Uh, people who are rich, it's very difficult for them to trust anyone as a friend because... They, they think this person's only coming to me because they want something from me. So among billionaires, they can relax. So Jesus Prabhu described that. Because he was very relaxed, because he wasn't, anyway, he wasn't interested in money for its own sake. But he was doing that as a business, I guess, to support his family at that time. So uh, Krishna is relaxed. He's just enjoy. He can enjoy. He has an in inexhaustible treasury. Even if he did give everything away, it still belonged to him. Constitutionally, everything's under his control. So he's in no anxiety. His only anxiety is to deliver the conditioned souls, and that he does by enjoying. He uh, he dominates this world and brings others back to him. Ananda chinmaya rasamat. What is that? Ananda chinmaya rasat. What is that? Ananda chinmaya rasat matayap manasu. Yeah, praninam pati palam smaritam upetya. Ilayatena bhuvanani jayatya jasram govinda madhi purusham tamaham bhajam. He conquers over this world by his blissful leelas, by his blissful pastimes. Ah. So, how does Krishna run the world? By running and spotting in the fields of Vrindavan and having his blissful pastimes. This is Krishna's management technique. <laughs> not recommended for everyone. Maybe we're not Krishna. He has his agents, Parasya Shaktiya Vividhaiva Shruyate. Swabhavaki jnana bala kriyasya. Natasya karyam karanam javidyate natatsamas chabhyatikas tradition. Everything goes on by his energies without his concern. So Krishna is able to be the great enjoyer. Uh, all enjoyment is within him. This we should always remember. He's Mahabhoga. We may have a little bhoga here. Yehi sangsparsha jabhoga dukha yonia evate. 
Adyandavantakontena teshu ramate buddha. We have a little enjoyment here. What is that enjoyment? Tripyanti. What is that? Tripyanti. Yanmaitonadi griham. Yanmaitonadi griham. Sukham. He touch him. Tripyanti neha. Vimokan. No, no, no. Ah, anyway, I can't remember. Kandutivan manasijang vishahitit. Tripyanti neha kripana bahudoka bayati. The itching sensation. Yanmaituna di grihame di sukamit vicham. Kandu yanena karyo yava dukka dukka. This, uh, our enjoyment, we think is very enjoyable, but it simply creates more disturbance. Therefore, we should not engage in it. We should tolerate it just like the itching sensation by scratching it. We think, ah, very nice, but the, the pus, the, the oozing increases. But with Krishna, there's no bad effect from his enjoyment. So we should know that real, great enjoyment is Krishna. If we really want to be happy, then we have to be happy in Krishna's happiness. Not by imitating him, by, by serving him, by acting in a way that we will be happy, we will be happy. Pratipalam smad, that uh, verse from Brahma Samhita I just quoted. His pastimes, they are as reflected in this material world. It's a perverse reflection. So, uh, yeah, so Krishna is Mahabhoga. Uh, Mahadhana. There's a very nice, uh, one of the commentators here has given a very nice uh, commentary that Lord Rama, there's so many people that were helping him in various ways. Of course, no one's helping him, but he gives them the chance to serve him. He'll give them gifts. He take the, but he didn't give anything to Hanuman. So Sita asked him that, well, you gave so many things to so many other people, why didn't you give to Hanuman? And Rama said, he's already given to Hanuman, I've already given to Hanuman something which no one else knows about. He's fully satisfied with that. You can ask him. So, uh, maybe you've seen the picture, Hanuman open, or pulling open and showing his heart. In his heart is Sita and Ram. So he'd already given himself along with Sita to Hanuman. So he was fully satisfied that he gives away the greatest wealth there is, which is himself. He gives to his devotees and therefore fills makes them Mahabhoga. They can enjoy the great wealth of he who is himself, all wealth, all enjoyment. It's, it's immense, immeasurable and imaginable, never diminishes, actually always increases. Uh, so we shouldn't envy Krishna. We should be very happy. Krishna is so great, so powerful, so happy. Why should he be happy? Why is he always happy? Oh, we shouldn't envy. Be happy that Krishna is happy. Then we can be happy. So, yeah, again, wealth that may be measured and for different people have different ideas. Some people, they think to have great knowledge is great wealth. They value that very highly. Some people think that beauty is very important. Health, health is wealth. <laughs> we don't realize that until we get ill health. But uh, however one may conceive of wealth... It's all in Krishna. In the great to the greatest possible extent. So Hare Krishna. If you want wealth, well you can ask Krishna. He can give you very easily. Just a tiny, tiny, tiny drop. But then it's an illusion to think we can have wealth. 
at all. So Mahabhoga by participate. If we try to participate in enjoyment of this world, we simply suffer. If we try to participate in Krishna's happiness, it's all auspicious. Completely different. The concept is the same because one is the perverted reflection of the other. It's just knowing where to place our love, as Srila Prabhupada writes in the introduction to the nectar of devotion that love, we, we have to know where to place our love. The center of love is Krishna. So Hare Krishna. I'll finish there. Hare Krishna. All glory is to Srila Prabhupada. Jai. You have a question? Yes. Regarding wealth in, um, in Krishna's service, uh, we are instrumental, we are using the wealth, but still, as a, in a brahmachari ashram, it's. In Krishna's service, we are using wealth, but brahmacharis are not supposed to be wealthy, so it seems to be contradictory. Well, that's resolved in the. Uh, Understanding that anasaktasya vishayan yatharam upayam jatahan yabandha krishna sambandhe yuktam vai ragyam uchite that we can utilize all the things of the world without being attached to them for our own personal sense gratification. We can use them seeing this relationship with Krishna. But yes, of course, we have to be careful not to take things in the name of serving Krishna and become ourselves very opulent and in this way in the name of serving Krishna we are actually uh, increasing our own material enjoyment so be careful hmm. anything else alright then Hare Krishna